We're gonna go over if lifting weights can help you with distance running, and we're gonna start right now. So one of the big things we gotta cover is what's running, right? And if I can think about running in 800 meters or, or 1500 meters, think about if I'm a triathlete, maybe I wanna run five to 10 miles at a time. Maybe I'm training for a marathon. You know, maybe I'm a 10K runner. I wanna regularly get out on the 10K. Maybe, you know, there's a turkey trout coming up and you're gonna train for that five mile run. Oftentimes, especially as recreational athletes, if we're getting into running, we just constantly are thinking about running, running, running and getting that volume up. How many miles can we run? in a specific week and we never really think about okay how can i increase maybe my vo2 max how can i increase maybe my speed how can i increase or potentially even prevent injury i'm wondering if you know maybe my hips start to get tight or maybe my lower back hurts or maybe my knees hurt there's certain aspects that really start to develop over chronic periods of running, especially as you start to increase your mileage. This is something that I dealt with, you know, as I increase my mileage for the Philadelphia Marathon from 35 miles a week up to 50 plus miles a week. So one of the things I did was download Peak Strength. Okay, you can go to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store. I downloaded that and I actually selected that I was gonna do resistance-based training specific for the marathon. And that was a big factor that helped me get through running my first ever marathon. So one of the big questions then is, does lifting weights actually improve running? And I think that one of the easiest ways that we can cover this, or one of the easiest ways that we can answer this is actually look at the research. And if we look at effects of running specific strength training, endurance training and concurrent training on recreational endurance athletes performance and their anthropometric parameters when we're doing this okay we have to think first you know let's just theoretically throw out there what's going to happen if we lift weights okay if we're training and if we're running 15 to 30 miles a week as a recreational runner or even if we're just running 10 miles a week we can build a little bit of muscle mass it is possible to do that so we could in theory gain weight but unlikely if we're running and lifting at the exact same time if you're keeping track of your calories, you're probably not going to be in this crazy caloric surplus, okay? If you're lifting and running at the same time, you're probably going to be pretty freaking healthy. So you're going to gain lean muscle mass. You're probably going to lose some of that adipose tissue. And then what are some other things that could happen? You might see, okay, I've got some knee issues. Maybe I can do some exercises like a sled push or a sled pull. Maybe that helps with my knees. Ah, my back's getting really tight. I'm a little stiff in my upper back. Okay, well, you can do some specific exercises like barbell snatch with just the bar and work on that thoracic extension. And while you're doing that, you start to realize that your mobility is improving and you're also getting more explosive. And if we get more explosive, in theory, if we have good endurance and we're getting more explosive as an athlete, now our stride length can get a little bit longer. And then on top of that, that's gonna help us with our recovery phase during running. So we could in theory have a greater recovery, okay, which would lead to more strides or faster strides that are more explosive, which then means we're using less energy to cover the same distance. Okay, so that's some of the theory around doing some resistance-based training with running. I think it comes back to starting with injury prevention and then going into performance performance enhancement based off of greater power output or in the case of running, greater impulse for every single stride. I think that's a big factor is that if we have greater force for every single stride, our impulse expression goes up and now we have a better time. So one of the big factors now is that I wanna look at some of the key objectives inside of this paper. So the present study, this specific study, effects of running specific strength training, they looked at uh, and they wanted to verify the effects of running specific strength training alone so just doing running specific strength training. Then they wanted to look at endurance training by itself and then concurrent training on recreational endurance athletes. And I think this is typically a major audience inside of the world of running. So they got 30 male recreational endurance runners. They use a blocking technique to either a running specific strength training group, okay? So running specific strength training group, an endurance training group, and then a group that was doing both endurance training and running specific strength training. The endurance group underwent three endurance sessions each week. Okay, so they're going out for three runs. Pretty standard for recreational runners. I think that's relatively consistent. Now the concurrent group underwent three days per week of concurrent training program performed on non-consecutive days. So let's say on Monday, I'm just trying to check that out. So for the concurrent group, they did a three day per week concurrent training program on non-consecutive days. So Monday, let's say they did strength, Wednesday they do endurance, back and forth. Okay. So they would do this for 12 weeks. So this is a 12 week test, decent length, three months, 
not incredibly long, but long enough to see if there's any type of adaptations. And they use accumulation, transmutation, realization. So block periodization is what they were using specific here. So they looked at what were they trying to figure out? And we talked about this when we were thinking about the resistance-based training and gaining more, more muscle mass, right? So they were looking at body mass. Did body mass increase, just total body mass? BMI, did a BMI increase or decrease? Did they get leaner with body fat percentage? So they're measuring some pretty cool stuff here with body fat and then lean mass. Then they're looking at counter movement jumps. Okay, so how do they handle that, that force in that specific period of time? Then they're looking at one rep max on the back squat and then running economy. I think this is gonna be the most important thing to remember here, okay? Running economy at 12, 14 kilometers per hour and then VO2 max and anaerobic threshold. I think if we're thinking about running, these are the two big ones, anaerobic threshold and the VO2 max. And I, I don't think anaerobic threshold is a great name for it, but that's what everybody in the running community uses. So maximum oxygen consumption. So what were the results? They're looking at each group and they're comparing that over 12 weeks. The running strength training group improved their counter movement jump. Okay, they improved their one rep max and they improved their running economy for 12 and 14 kilometers per hour. Basically my, my consideration there is they put them on a treadmill at those specific intervals and they, they went after it. The endurance training group significantly improved in the running economy for 12 kilometers per hour, the running economy for 14 kilometers per hour, so same thing. And then they also improved their anaerobic threshold in their VO2 max in 12 weeks. That's great, that's really good. VO2 max can be challenging to improve. It usually takes like six months to really put a dent in it. Okay, so now the concurrent group, okay? So the concurrent group obtained significant improvements in body fat percentage. So they improved in body fat percentage, which is what we talked about. They of course improved also in lean mass because they increased their body fat, they decreased their body fat percentage. They improved their counter movement jump. So they were able to handle that force more effectively. They improved their one rep max. This is getting pretty crazy. They improved their one rep max in the back squat. They're running economy at 12 kilometers per hour. They're running economy at 14 kilometers per hour and they improved their anaerobic threshold. Oh, and their VO2 max, so right here. So they improved basically everything. So the resistance training group obtains improvements significantly higher than the endurance group in counter movement jump and the one rep max and in running economy at 14 kilometers per hour, which is interesting. The endurance training results were significantly better than those attained by the resistance training group in anaerobic threshold, which makes sense. Okay, so the concurrent group, those marks were significantly higher than those obtained by the endurance group in running economy at 14 kilometers per hour and the counter movement jump. And that was almost something that I sort of put out there in the beginning is that if we get stronger and we get more explosive based off of our resistance based training, we in theory should have greater impulse expression for every single stride. I believe what we're seeing here is that the resistance based training work can improve running economy because your technique might get better and you're getting more explosive and you should be able to hold better posture. So I think that that's a big factor here that a lot of runners sort of discount. That's one thing that you know, I was concerned weighing 220 pounds and going out and running a marathon being my first race ever. Could I get under five hours? Yeah, I, I did it, you know, pat on the back, yay. But one of the things that, one of the reasons why I think I was able to do it was because I, I was able to handle the mileage from a lot of the resistance base training background I have. Now, I wasn't doing a ton, but twice a week was plenty. Okay, so the conclusion here, and I think this is just, let's see what the scientists said here. And this is Pablo Gonzalez and Yarmir Sedlicek performing a 12 week concurrent training program integrated into the ATR accumulation, transmutation, realization, periodization system effectively improves body comp and performance variables. I think we gotta bring both of those up. Body composition and performance that can be obtained with exclusive running specific strength training and endurance training in recreational runners age 30 to 40. I think that's a big thing that we've gotta keep in mind. If we wanna enhance our training, prevent injury, get leaner, do them both. It's gonna be great for you. It's gonna, running specific strength training enhances maximum and explosive strength and exclusive endurance training improves VO2 max, anaerobic threshold, uh, and RE, I forget what RE is. Where's, okay, running economy, running economy. So performing concurrent and lifting also improves running economy. And performing concurrent training on non-consecutive days effectively prevents the strength and endurance adaptations attained with single mode exercise from being attenuated. Block periodization system is useful in improving recreational endurance athletes performance parameters, especially when performing concurrent 
uh, training. So going a little bit deeper and in thinking into what can we do to apply uh, this training. And I think if we would lay out a week and say, okay, let's run three to four days a week. Let's do resistance-based training two days a week. It's gonna be pretty simple if you said, okay, one day a week, we're gonna do you know, high threshold training. So we're gonna do hill sprints eight by 100 meters, something like that. One day a week, we could get on a bike or we could go for a really long run at around an hour to an hour and a half. Two days a week, maybe we will run five to seven miles. And then that's how we set up our week. Your resistance-based training, and this is one thing that we do inside of our app, Peak Strength, is that if you're training for the marathon, you might be looking at a workout that's 40 minutes. And if you follow the right rest schemes, and if you're following the exercise selection and everything along those lines, you're gonna increase your running economy and you're gonna increase your lean muscle mass while also improving those performance variables. So head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store or the Apple iOS Store. Start to improve your running today because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.